Okay, how was that? Easy? I'll do that in class for it. We had the same issue in the eight part class as well. It is uh, the cost you had the dice three times. At least once, right? Probability of at least one. Also, come to you. Yeah. I told you. There are two ways to tackle this problem. A kind of brute force turn the crank, and you should know how to do that. And that would be all right, well, I've got the probability of at least one in three attempts. That means it's the probability of exactly one, or the probability of getting <coughs> two twos when I roll the dice, or the probability of getting three twos, getting a two three times in a row. What can you tell me about these outcomes? They are, well, I'm using an or here, so what's important? They're disjoint. There's disjoint, mutually exclusive, so I can say that's the probability of getting just one plus the probability of getting two plus the probability of getting three. By my own notation, I mean that would be the probability of getting a two on the dice twice, two out of three times. Right? So you'd have to calculate three of those and then add them up. And you could do that. What's a faster way? Who got it? Do that keys? Can you like the complement? Yeah. Let's be lazy and clever. Sometimes they coincide, not always. But the probability of at least one, the complement of that is, so E is the event at least one. Then what's the complement of B? E? None. And we know from this simple little rule of complements that the probability of E, what I'm interested in, is 1 minus the probability of its complement. And I maintain it's much easier to find the probability of the complement. Okay, so if I'm not going to get a 2 the first time, what's that probability? 2. 5 out of 6. Five out of six. Now, each roll of the dice, how do we describe that procedure? Those events are disjoint. Independent. Successive trials, <coughs> they're independent. What I get the first time has no influence on what I get the second, third, and so on. So that means I can multiply these probabilities doesn't change. That's the probability of not getting it to the first time, not getting it to the second time, not getting it to the third time. That's it. Yeah, you can pretty that up, get out your calculator, it comes to 0.42, something like that. You get it? Be alert for this problem. I did warn you, didn't I? I said this is a very simple little formula that's going to come in handy. And we used it on the birthday problem, too. I get point, point, five, For this, and then one minus it. Uh, all right, we'll go over, uh, I'll have those back to you on Monday. But today, uh, really not new material, just further exploring this concept of conditional probabilities. So a lot more examples. Uh, this is a hard topic. It's hard to get the first time. <coughs> I can see from the expressions on your faces at times it's challenging. So let's go through it again today. I'll work a little bit more with this two-way table, this contingency 
table. And then we're going to close with some examples of additional probability where we don't have conditions This is just a convenience. It's, a, it's an easy way to get introduced to conditional probabilities. All right, the first challenge that I'm aware of, and believe me, I've taught this stuff here, so I know this is a challenge, is just being able to interpret what the conditional probability means. Be able to go from a sentence to the terms, the expression, or back from the expression to the an English statement. Okay, here's our background again. We have a polygraph that gives a result of a plus or minus. A positive result indicates that it indicates that the person's lying. A negative result indicates it's not lying. Then you have the reality of the person who's taking the test that they did or did not lie. You have four possible outcomes now. Two of them are correct, two of them are incorrect. Now, let's take the position of the polygamy. You're the person administering the test. And you, at the end of the test, you get any positive indication. And you want to know the probability that person is telling the truth. How would I write that using my notation? What is given? What do you know? The result was positive. That's what I know. I'm a play for I know that. I can see the results. It indicates positive. Do I know the person's lying or not? No, I don't know that. The probability I'm interested in is possibly what's the probability that person's actually telling the truth, even though the test indicated it's positive. All right? Now let me switch it around. Give me an English sentence that describes this problem. Asking. The subject told the truth, but we're trying to find the probability of the test. Uh, yeah. To the right of the vertical line is the condition. Think of these as happening in sequence or as prior knowledge. I know. Now, this is from the perspective of the person who's taking the test, isn't it? You're the guy who's strapped to the chair. You know that you're telling the truth. What's the probability that that machine will indicate that I'm lying? These are different probabilities, aren't they? Different situations. And in general, we said it's not the case that the probability of A given B is generally not equal to the probability of B given A. They are different situations. Pretty subtle at times. This can be very confusing. Helps though to see it with the contingency table, and you can you know, lay it out in rows and columns. All right? I still see some smoke coming out of here, so I'm not altogether convinced. Let me do just a few more here to, to see where we're at. How would you describe that conditional probability? That's Susan. Um, the probability that the test indicated the subject did not lie given that they lied. Excellent. Everybody pick that up? Alright, we'll do one more just for feeling here. probabilities using the contingency uh, table. 
I'm going to leave these on Wednesday, but there's a few more. Then I'm going to go through examples where we calculate conditional probabilities in other situations. Now, the nice thing about contingency tables, we have this graphical way to get the conditional probability. I can always go to the formula. I should write it up here. It's the, it never fails me. The probability of B given A is the probability of A and B over the probability of A. The shortcut I'm showing you is actually just another way of implementing or calculating that formula. So let's take the, the example of uh, probability given that it's a positive test result, so the test indicated line. What's the probability the person is really telling the truth? Now, in the backdrop of the situation, remember we had 98 people go through this process. So really what I'm saying is I'm selecting one of those 98 at random. What's the probability that I've selected one of those 98 people who, uh, where the machine indicated that they were lying and reality they were lying, <coughs> right? That's what we're looking for. Well, what you can do then, keep in mind that everything to the right of that vertical line is, you can almost think of this history where it's given, you know that. So you can forget about anything else. My two columns represent either a positive outcome from the test or a negative. But wait, I've already told you, it's a positive outcome. So just gray out that second row. It's not relevant anymore because we have additional information. When you get new information, your probability changes. So now, how many outcomes do I have that fit this description where the indication was positive? Well, I have 57 of them. So this is P of T given a plus. All right, now I'm focused in on just those 57 outcomes, which is the top row. What probability am I interested in? Uh, the person told the truth. Well, there's only 15 of those. So that's 15 out of 57. In each of these cases, the technique, you're going to eliminate either row or column, depending on what you've been given. All right, we'll do one more here before we move on. <coughs> Actually, I'll ask you to do that. All right? Cadet Lucas, what am I going to do? What row or column will I eliminate? Take that. I don't know the to the right of the vertical line, so I know that the person told the truth. Is that represented as a column or a row in my table? No, that's represented as a yeah, column. Yeah, the first column. So you can imagine changing the uh, shading in this. The first column is what I know. The second column, now I, I ignore. Yeah. All right, so how many are represented that first column? can't see that it's 47. That line covers it up. <coughs> of those 47, how many had a positive test result? 15. So there's proof that, that the probability of T given to plus is not equal to the probability of plus given to T. These things don't commute. I just can't switch the letters around and assume it's the same probability. They're really different. All right, can you kick that horse enough? We'll find some new horses, don't worry. Now, this slide has an error on it, but PowerPoint will let me edit it, so I'll have to redo it. See if you can find the error. Here's the situation. 
have 20 cadets. We have 20 cadets, six have rank. Of those that have rank, two are sergeant, four are corporal. I randomly select a cadet, and that cadet has rank. What's the probability that cadet is a sergeant? In these kinds of problems, it's going to take you up. You're going to have to read it a few times, let the words absorb, get absorbed. But then the first thing is write down the events that are pertinent here. And there are two things that are pertinent. Uh, label A, the cadet has rank, and B, the cadet is a sergeant. And then let's write down, what am I interested in? Well, I'm being asked to find the probability that a cadet is a sergeant if I know the cadet has a rank. Okay, I would write that as P of B given A. Do you agree? See that? Okay. Well, I know a formula for that. That's the formula right there for the condition of probability. Now we get to this far, it's pretty much turned into crank. The probability of, have we seen the mistake yet? Two out of 20. That should be two out of 20. I saved it for the new version of PowerPoint <coughs> and it saved it as a picture and I can't do it. Um, that should be two out of 20. Which it is down here. But not here. Why is that two out of 20? The two events are the cadet is as rank and as a sergeant. Well, being a sergeant is a subset of being having rank, right? So that's the same as saying how many cadets are sergeants? Two out of 20. <coughs> so that goes to the top. And the bottom, the probability of A, what's A? A cadet has rank. What's that? Six out of 20. So all together it's one out of three. These problems aren't too bad if you're uh, patient and just step by step kind of sneak up on the solution. If you try to solve it in your head, okay. it, it's going to be hard. Thank you. Let's do, let's do another one. How did your thing go yesterday? 70% of the students passed freshman counties. We wish. Of those who passed, 20% got an A, 50 got a B, and 30 got a C. What's the probability <coughs> that a student received a B if it's known that she passed? Okay, so let's start with our little technique now. The first thing is write down the pertinent events. What am I interested in? Well, I've got two events that are mentioned up here. The student passed calculus and the student received a B in calculus. How do I rephrase the question that was asked in terms of a probability expression? What will be the probability of B given A? Is that right? I want to know if that person has passed, that's the A event. What is the probability that she got to be in the course? Okay, so I've made my transition from English to mathematics. I've got a formula for that. And now I just go ahead and turn the crank. Now what might be a little bit confusing here, let's think about, I think the P of A is pretty easy, right? That's a probability the student passed calculus. We were told that 70% did. That's 0.7 on the bottom. And what's the probability they passed calculus and got a B in the course? Well, 70% passed, and 50% of those that passed got B. So 0 0.7 times 0.5, 0.35, or 35% overall got a B. So the probability on this problem is 0 0.5, what happened? Hang of it. All right.
right? Let's do another one. I've got a lot of these. That's the about the internet. I can always get a lot of them. You have a neighbor, and you learn that he has a uh, the neighbor comes over to your door, knocks on, wants to borrow a cup of sugar or something, right? And he has with him a son. You know he has, the neighbor has two children. What's the probability that the boy's uh, sibling is a brother? All right, the basics. What are the events? Well, one of the children is a boy. One of the two children. And the B is both children are boys. That corresponds to the boy you see, his sibling being a boy. Just for convenience, I wrote down the sample space. This problem, that's easy. We've gone through this problem several times. You're not always going to be able to do that. And it's not always required either, but if it's available, it can help you through thinking through the problem. <coughs> Again, I formulate my problem as a probability statement. So in my notation, I get the probability of B given A. What do I know? I know one of the two children is a boy. That's given. I want you to have a kid. What probability am I asked? That's the B part. Are both the children boys? Okay. Just take it step by step, you inch up on it, and then, all right, I got the formula for that. Now there's a little bit of work to be done. We'll do the uh, easy part again. P of A, what's the probability that one of the children is a boy? Out of two births, how many of those are one boy? Three out of four. Yeah. <coughs> What's the probability that it's A and B? One of the children is a boy and both children are boys. One of the four. Yeah, it's just one fourth. Because that's really B is a subset of A, so the probability of A and B together is just one out of four. So the probability here is one third. Now if you, yes? Um, how can you say this is four if you know that for a fact one is a guy? How can you still have G and G? If you know for a fact, why would you still sort of include uh, two girls? Oh, that's a good question. Isn't the answer just getting rid of the GG in the same space? Like you just make it one third, you get rid of the GG, and then you have just GG. Wait, say that again. Isn't the answer just taking one GG since you know? And then you have one B. Yeah, then you have one third. You're thinking like one B. You know that. You know that that's not one of the options. You know that from your observation. Okay. So there's only three out of four. Okay. So there's only three outcomes that are left. And one of those four is four. No way to get it. There's yet another take on this problem, and if you. Well, the web you can search and subtle variation on this that I still can't get my mind around. It's now instead of the you know, father bringing over a son, he randomly selects one of his children and he observes a boy. That changes the probability. We're not going there. If I can't explain it to you, we're not going to go there. All right, have a good weekend. Get rested up.
get them off. I'm going to speak in a second. Thank you, too. Oh. Can you explain the car type scene? Because I like, I know the Ace is the black cars. There's or there's not the Ace, but the Spade is the black car. Spade clubs are black cards. Okay. Diamonds and hearts are red clubs. Okay. Are red cards. So they are spades are black. So it's only like thirteen. Is it thirteen spades? There's thirteen in each suit, so twenty out of fifty-two altogether. Okay. Four times thirteen. Okay, so when it said, um, when it said like three spades in a row, mm -hmm. how would he just like that out? Sure, all right, so the first time I'm drawing a card okay. without a replacement, without replacement, there's, there's 52 cards. And how many of those are spades? So 13. I've drawn it, I still have it in my hand. Mm -hmm. How many cards are left? Total oh, 51 cards. How many spades are left? Well, I've got two spades in my hand. How many cards are left? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't think I was right. You have too many <laughs> cards? <laughs> no, I, I actually did that because I remember, you, I remember you saying, like I'm not familiar with cards, but I remember you saying that um, the four suits and 13 cards and I started writing that down and then I said this is not right. So I said, uh, I'm good. All right, we'll go over it Monday.